All right, let's talk about how to get antibiotics in a post-apocalyptic world. The grid's down, hospitals are zombie buffets, and every single cut is a death sentence. Bacteria are the real apocalypse bosses now. You're barricaded in some abandoned kitchen, sweat pouring down your face, your leg throbbing like it's auditioning for a horror flick. There are no pills, no docs, it's just you, the rot, and a desperate need to not become pus-filled roadkill. But don't worry, we're about to culture some mold into your own personal lifesaver. First, scavenge something starchy and gross. Grab that stale bread from a Ludoo pantry or a bruised orange if you're feeling fancy. Hell, potato peels work if you're digging through trash heaps. Now, smear it with a bit of dirt or spit. Yeah, your own. Hygiene is a pre-collapse joke. And stash it somewhere warm and damp, under a leaky roof or, hey, stick it in your boot for body heat. Wait a few days. If green fuzz blooms like alien pubes, you've got penicillium mold, nature's sloppy little antibiotic factory. But, and this is important, if it turns black and smells like death's armpit, you abort. That's the wrong mold. It'll kill you faster than the infection. Next up, the messy extraction. Mash that moldy mess into a salvage jar with some boiled water. Boil it over a trash fire. Just don't sip the radiation tea. Strain it. Use whatever rag you've got. A torn shirt sleeve, an old sock, anything that isn't already crawling with bugs. Let it ferment in the dark for another day or two. Bubbles mean it's working, or maybe exploding. It's a 50-50 chance in a wasteland. Finally, skim off that liquid gold. That is your crude penicillin brew. Now dose yourself sparingly. Rub it on the wound or chug a sip if you're bold. Too much, you puke your guts out. Too little, the fever wins. And if it tastes like fermented regret, that's the flavor of survival, my friend. The science here is just chaos magic. The mold pumps out chemicals to kill rival bacteria, just like when Fleming forgot his lunch in a lab. Those compounds inhibit cell walls, turning that infection into a failed invasion. No PhD needed, just scraps and pure instinct. So if the fever breaks and you're not hallucinating mutant rats, congratulations, you just beat the bugs with backyard biohacking. And if not, well, at least you died trying. And that's science's ultimate punchline, here in the ruins.